Hello everyone, I'm Daz and welcome to American Civil War and UK History Podcast. This presentation is available as a video on our YouTube channel or as a podcast from wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you're watching on YouTube and you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. And to keep up to date with everything American Civil War and UK History, you can do that by visiting our website where you'll find blog posts and links to all of our content, including all of our social media pages. Today's discussion is about the Southern Skirmish Association which is an American Civil War reenactment site here in the UK. And to discuss this with me today is the current chairman of the Southern Skirmish Association, Robert Dixon. Welcome, welcome, Robert. Hello, and thank you for inviting me. Excellent. Um, so, firstly, Robert, please explain who you are. <laughs> right. Um, I am I'm Robert Dixon. I'm the current chairman of the Southern Skirmish Association. Um, I'm a school teacher. I work in a secondary school. Uh, very interested in history. Uh, and yeah, it's basically the general gist of who I am. Um, so you did say, obviously, you're a teacher, but you you uh, recently um, got your history, history degree. Is that right? So just tell us a little bit about yeah. how that was for you. Yeah, so I got my degree back in uh, 2021, um, so you know, three years ago now. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I went to university, uh, the University of Essex here in, in the UK, and uh, I got a degree in uh, a BA in history. And uh, I basically studied all sorts of different parts of history from early, uh, well, not early, not ancient history, but I studied from basically the medieval period forward up until like the Second World War and things like that. Uh, but I had a very keen interest in in uh, medieval and uh, early modern history, which is very strange because the Civil War is not in the medieval or early modern period. But um, it's it's an area of interest of mine. Um, but yeah, also the Civil War is an interest uh, or the American Civil War is an interest of mine. Uh, as well uh, i've sort of gained over the years which i think will lead on to your your s previous slides slightly <laughs> exactly. so that is exactly the question i was going to ask you robert how did you and, and your story is very similar to mine get into the american civil war because you just said you know the, your, your favorite period before that was medieval and and again like you said there's quite a big gap between the medieval period and the civil war period so yeah please please explain uh how you got into the American Civil War? Yeah, so um, myself, like uh, lots of other people, films are very important to me. And, like watching films, um, I love watching history films. And uh, you've got some of the ones that are, you know, I, I were really inspirational to me. I mean, Waterloo, particularly getting that interest in the the, the Black Powder period, the early eighteen hundreds, and then obviously seeing Glory, Gettysburg, and then later Gods and Generals really give like, develop that interest for me in the Civil War, and uh, particularly Gettysburg. I mean, once I saw that, I was like, okay, where's where can I get involved with this? Is there anything in the UK I can get involved with? Um, and luckily, there was. Um, there was two two organisations. The first organisation I looked at was way up north, so I couldn't get to any of those. Uh, and the second one uh, was Soscan, which is uh, the uh, well, the uh, society that I'm part of now and now leading as chairman. Excellent. And as you said there, you became a member of the Southern Skirmish Association in 2016. And I I've got the, I found this lovely picture of you. <laughs> oh, what happened? And I'm actually receiving my enlistment papers there. Oh, so it's in my hand. Is. But yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I found some fantastic <laughs> pictures of you when you and Christ, you you're young. I look quite young <laughs> in these, and my equipment there is atrocious. The only thing I owned there that one was mine was those shoes, those brogans. The only things I bought for my first event. This is Caldergott Castle back in 2016. And it was my first event, and then the then lieutenant of the 18th Missouri, uh, uh, Chris Bates, he uh, he gave me my enlistment papers, but all all formal there uh, in the fields uh, with the rest of the company behind me, which you don't quite see. They're out of shot to the right there a little bit, but uh, yeah, they were there, and uh, yeah, really, it really spurred me into wanting to continue to do the hobby. I wanted to try it, but it was yeah, spurred me. Yeah, that was the moment that yeah. I thought, yeah, this is the hobby for me. And so did it get you more interested in the actual history of the Civil War itself? Obviously, yeah. like the medieval, but... Yeah, you know. well, I, I do... Also, yeah, because of the films like Waterloo and all that sort of stuff, I was really... Uh, I became having a keen interest in, in uh, like, black powder stuff. And then I started to sort of... You know, I play lots of uh, games as well. So a lot of online games involve that sort of stuff. So Total War games and uh, War of Rights, all that sort of stuff, all around this sort of period. 
um, you know, Napoleon Total War and all that sort of stuff. And I got really interested in it. I thought, you know, this is the real life, uh, you know, way I can continue from going from that game into the sort of living history. And and, and then I developed sort of the interest in researching and stuff, uh, the Civil War. Um, I mean, I, I'm not all, uh, I'm not really interested in a lot of like the bigger events. I mean, I know about some of the bigger events. I'm very interested in like the sort of nitty gritty bits of uh, you know soldiers lives how drill works i mean you know me you know, uh-huh. and that's all the stuff that i, <laughs> that I like to enjoy um, Rob, Rob, uh, robert enjoys cases uh definitely. <laughs> very um, much so <laughs> yeah, and when i've just gone to bed at four o'clock in the morning and have to get up and do the drill i don't enjoy it as much <laughs> um, it's my own fault but, <laughs> yeah anyway um so how did you end up joining? Because Robert is a member of the 18th Missouri, isn't that correct, Robert? Yes, so how I did you end up meeting these guys and joining these guys in particular? Yeah, so um, Soscan um, has a nice sort of selection um, of different regiments. Uh, I knew I wanted to be Union. I didn't want to be a Confederate, so, so I had more of an affinity with the Union. So I looked at the list of Union units. And I knew I wanted to be in a, a volunteer unit because, you know, I'd done a little bit of research and I thought the volunteers, you know, would fit uh, a little bit met more. So uh, that sort of meant I could only choose one of two. And one was the 28th Mass uh, or, well, sorry, there was three. There's 20th Main, 28th Mass and the 18th Missouri. Unfortunately, the 28th Massachusetts had folded that previous year or in previous years before that. So they were no longer a unit in Suscam. And the 20th Main had very few people that I could contact. So the main group that was available was the 18th Missouri, who straight away, as soon as I contacted them, were very helpful, gave me their information pack, um, coached me along. As I said earlier, the only thing I owned there in that image is those uh, brogans that I'm wearing. Everything else was loaned to me by the company. So I think we're going to talk about a little bit later about Mm -hmm. um, how the organization stuff works with different units. But it was a great way to join Suscan, but also join the 18th. I'm a member of the 18th and Suscan, um, which means, you know, that gives a little bit more of a, you know, a togetherness because we are part of a particular unit. Yes, excellent. And so we are going to talk about the Southern Skirmish Association because people might not realise that it is one of the oldest uh, reenactment sites in the UK. And this was at Suffolk this year, this fabulous picture of us. And as you can see, it's fairly small these days. Um, But Robert's going to tell us a little bit about the history. So um, when was it created, Robert? Well, um, Soscan was created in 1968 and by four uh, four people, and uh, bear with me a moment because I have to actually get the names. Uh, but uh, by four particular people, we have uh, Bill Hayward, uh, Lawrence Watson, Victor uh, Farrier, and Terry Boniface. And they're the four sort of founding members of Soscan. Uh, and they've got the picture there, um, which is uh, by sent to me by uh, Terry's granddaughter, Danny, who is a current uh, treasurer uh, in Soscan. And they basically sort of created it as sort of they became very interested in the Civil War. There wasn't a lot of it, uh, a lot of information about it here in the UK. So they decided to basically put the organization together as sort of a part uh, hobby, pastime thing to do, part educational thing. And that sort of still exists in Saskia. And today we are still an educational charity. It didn't become a charity until later on, but we are an educational charity that both portrays soldiers of the american civil war and civilians and also educates the public about it as well so we're doing a, a double edged sword uh, as it is one side reenacting one side uh, historical um, education mm-hmm. and uh well some of the guys the earlier guys that i've spoken to said getting some of the kit in the 90s you know in the late 60s early 70s was really difficult for them to to get hold of the yeah you know, kit. Ex- Extremely difficult. We didn't have the sutlers or the seamstresses and all that we we sit we have today. Um, back then, they were basically using what they could. I've heard lots of stories of uh, you know reusing old service jackets or dyeing old like workmen's trousers or fire brigade uniforms and things like that, changing the buttons or molding their own things. I heard them you know the use of old shotguns and things like that. It was a bit of a mishmash. Uh, fireman's boots and things like that so before all of the proper production and things that came out like that they had to sort of make do with what they can uh, do but you know again it was a learning experience for them they could use that 
to research more, gain more information, and then use that to create, again, uniforms, and that later would become the sort of stuff that they, they passed on to, to later generations. Yes, exactly. Um, and what was the core purpose again of because it's it's not it's not just so there's a living history um, uh, element to it, isn't there? And how does that fit? How did that fit into the modern world? And how does that fit into the modern world now? OK, so history is I mean, I'm a history teacher. I know the daily struggles of trying to get young people interested in, in history uh, because to them, it's a lot of just, OK, we're reading out of a book and Sarah's telling us about something that was 400 years ago, 200 years ago, 150 years ago, whatever. Um, and history is very static. It's on the paper. It's on the page. You try and make it in school as interesting as possible. But living history is that element where you can become the history and give that sort of you know, put forward to the general public a snapshot of what that history was like. I mean, our main goal is to be a window into the the um, the life of soldiers and civilians of the 1860s. And uh, we try as best we can to put that forward. OK, as we have said, numbers these days are a little bit limited, but we can still put together a, a, a good representation of what life was like in the 1860s. And that is more interesting because it's a bit more hands on, a bit more visual, which some people uh, love. I mean, lots of people love. We go to shows, everyone, um, you know, enjoys our display or most of the time anyway um but uh you know it's something more visual rep representative of that history instead of just reading out of a book or seeing on a documentary and and the way i because i'm not like some some of the other guys I, i'm not really into the you know the big time living history like living that way and you know we have some guys that are like that you know like having their shelter halves and mm -hmm. again you know um the camping part of it, I love, you know, I love the community part of it. I love the fact that we all got to sit around the fire, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, but there are different uh, elements on there are different people and people like different things, which makes it fantastic as well. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're picking on the, the, the different levels of, of reenactment. Um, uh, I'll, I'll caveat beforehand. Uh, in the United States, they have uh, levels of uh, the different stages and levels as well. But the, the translation to the UK is slightly different. So we have what we call mainstream and then we have sort of the progressives. So the mainstream is sort of your bog standard mainstream reenactor. They they do sort of, uh, you know, a majority of the work. If we're talking about British mainstream, we still have. A set of rules i mean soscan has auth authenticity standards we have to follow those standards but there's a little bit of leeway i mean we have a lot of families we have a lot of people who are slightly older so some of those authenticity standards doesn't quite fit out for them or they're not healthy enough to say lay it lay in the cold ground uh, overnight for a weekend or whatever um so we have a little bit of relaxation of rules for some of those people but they're still strict standards between the periods of like nine and uh, five, there is a six specific set of authenticity standards that we must follow. We all have uniform standards. They must be a certain way. They must look a certain way. As we can see here, you know, there are specific standards that need to be followed. Uh, and then we have more of the, the progressive reenactors. Um, and here in the UK, that is a good example of that on the right uh, with uh, Lee in there, in their, their good Confederate gear there. That is what we call more progressive, more authentic quality uniforms, but also sleeping, as you can see behind them, a, a dog tent, pretty much almost pinpoint accurate to how they would be in the Civil War. Now, over in the States, that those two descriptors are very different well, as well as some polar opposites and some even more stretched opinions of mainstream and progressives. I'm not going to get into that because that's a bit of a political thing over in the States on uh, who should be what and how they should be doing. But here in the UK, pretty, pretty strict set of standards uh, that we all must follow. But there is some leeway for, for some people because of you know because general life i mean <laughs> we are not the the men of the the 1860s we are modern people and therefore there are some things that we can tolerate and we can't tolerate and therefore you know you need to have that little bit of leeway and that's why we're a bit a very all-encompassing society because we allow for all types of people to to come and uh, do civil war reenactment but in a way that isn't going to be sort of detrimental to them yeah, excellent. Yeah, some excellent points there, mate. And uh, so 
what would you say is the state of the reenactment in general and how does uh, Soscan uh, fit into that? Yeah, reenactment has struggled a little bit in recent years. I mean, um, certain groups are doing particularly really well, particularly World War Two and medieval sort of stuff doing really well. And that's mainly because there's this huge push in the media for documentaries and TV programs and what else all about, um, you know, the Second World War and medieval period, which has really boosted those numbers. Civil War hasn't really had anything like that. And again, the Civil War is an American piece of history, which for a lot of people, people go, why, why, why do you do something about America? I mean, it's not really involved. Uh, but they forget the fact that, you know, a large number of soldiers in the in, in the American Civil War were for, 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 from foreign countries. You know, English, Irish, Germans, all sorts of people were, were fighting in the Civil War. So it's actually a part of our history as well. And uh, I mean, we had some very deep political history as well with the, the cotton trade and uh, stuff like that. So um, we are we are linked to Civil War history, but um, reenactment in general, not to go off on a, a tangent about history for a moment, but um, reenactment in general has sort of seen a decline. As we said, our numbers have uh, dropped compared to back in the day um, when, you know, we field about 300, 400 people these days, you know, not so much. Um, and that's sort of what we want to change because we want to show that reenactment is actually a really good hobby. It is my favourite pastime. I mean, I, I, I count down the days to when the reenacting season starts and I can go out and we can all meet each other. You know, I can see you, Darren, and all that and all the other people that we see uh, at events and we get to meet each other, the camaraderie that we have. And then we get to do our, our favourite thing, which is you know, recreate for that weekend Civil War soldiers. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we can get more people interested um, and hopefully with this and other social media and and, uh, you know, getting the history out there a bit more, more people will become interested in doing reenacting in general, as well yeah. as us. Excellent. Yeah. And again, I am a mainstream reenactor. Sorry, everyone. Um, but um, yeah, I do love it. I, I, I count down the days as well. I'm just literally counting down the months at the moment and the days um, to the next one, because um, it's been a long time since uh, August. Um, so. How do people get involved with SOSCAN? Well, there's several different ways of getting involved with SOSCAN. Um, first one would probably be directly at an event. If you come and see us at an event, you'll probably talk to members uh, of the society, be it union or confederate, be it individual units, and they'll probably give you some sort of bump or a, you know, a leaflet or a flyer or something that is for their unit or the wider soscan in general and then from there there'll be social media or email links to particular people you can contact and then another right you know, another way of contacting us will probably be through social media uh through our website which at the moment is a bit under construction uh, as we're going to a new website but other social media like as you can see you know we have, you know daz has a lot of social media but we have things like facebook instagram you know uh, twitter or x uh, tiktok as well all of those things that we all use also um you just simply type in southern skirmish association or soscan and it tends to to come up as one of the first results on there and you can contact us through through those as well almost all of our social media and, and online presence will give you some sort of contact straight away they will contact us and we will basically try and get you involved with our society as soon as possible Excellent. And uh, so let's have a, so if somebody joins, um, let's have a brief overview of different roles. We'll start with roles. We'll talk about units at the, um, at the end, because um, yep. more about the roles. So if, again, if I move over to this slide, you can explain the different, obviously. So again, we have the union side and we have the Confederate side, but we do have other roles. And as we go through some of these slides in a minute. Yeah. We so clear. at the basic standard, we have, Union infantry and Confederate infantry. You know, a good example on there. I'm on the left there in Union, and then on the right there we've got some Confederates. Uh, they're a very basic, bog standard infantry. Sort of a majority of the society is made up of infantry on both sides, and then we also have um, both sides have their own artillery units. So you know, as we said, as we'll get down into particular um, individual units later, but we've got artillery units uh, which use um two-third scale size replicas and in one case the napoleon we have is full size scale so that gets to be used we also have our civilian society um which is uh filled up with um you know 
the men and women that make up our civilian society and those who are non-combatants um, and they will all have uh, excellent displays i can see uh, ray from the fourth us on there she has an excellent post office display which talks about like postal service during the american civil war and uh, you know lots of uh, different things that they used um and um we also have other roles like if you don't want to be a combat soldier there's musicians um, I think on the next slide, you've got a picture of that. There you go. We've got some musicians there. We've got some talented musicians uh, over both sides yes. uh, of the society. And they are, I mean, talented. I mean, really good drummers, fifers, guitar players, fiddlers, all sorts. Um, and singers as well. <laughs> uh, so really good. And then obviously I, I can see uh, uh, our final one there. We've got some uh, odds and ends. We've got medical. Uh, we've got the medical unit, the military medical unit. But we've also got some civilian ones like our embalmer surgeon there who talks about embalming and, uh, you know, getting getting the dead prepared um, after they've died in the Civil War, which, again, more interaction with the public, more education element also. Yeah. And again, uh, I'm glad I brought this picture up because I was worried I didn't have anything with tents in. But if people <laughs> are wondering, yes, that is how we would live for the weekend. And you see in the background yeah, that picture, particular picture there. Um, and, you know, but again, the pressure is not on. You don't have to sleep in the tent. You can go and sleep in a plastic tent somewhere else if you want to. But I think once you did come away you would probably want to stay there because it's just such a fabulous atmosphere isn't it with inside the camps yeah i mean it really puts you there i mean we lay, lay out um, i mean specifically in, in the union but in general across the whole society we lay out in the military style with the proper layouts of the tents and the proper formations um and you know it's once you're there you know you're there you're you're part of that atmosphere of the civil war so um you know i love uh, the camping element to it because it's it's you know you're there you're, you're immersing yourself yeah and uh so let's talk about the different units that are, are around in soscan and of course this has changed over you know 50 odd years because obviously yeah. some are not here anymore but um i think this is the current uh regiments that we currently have isn't it so just tell us a little <laughs> bit about those so i'll start on the confederate side because it's a little bit more complex on the confederate side um, the Confederates, they form the Confederate Battalion, which is the group of units um, on the Confederate side. Uh, as you can see, that's made off uh, Arkansas, 16th Tennessee, 17th Virginia, 55th Virginia, uh, and the 1st Maryland Artillery and CS Medical Staff. Um, in recent years, because of depletion of numbers, they tend to amalgamate together into one, one unit. Um, and, but hopefully, again, if we can increase numbers, we can start going back to those designations. They still have their designations that, you know, they still have their individual identities as a unit. But these days, because of numbers, they amalgamate to, together as one 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 company, really, uh, uh, with their own staff and uh, structure as well. Um, on the union, um, we have a bit more designate, you know, a bit more, bit more um, uh, you know, individuality um because we've got slightly larger numbers for our different companies so we have your company does that you're in the fourth us which are a bit more regulars uh, they're the regulars of the us army you know the 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 career soldiers as you will or the shinies as we like to call you behind your mm. back um but uh yeah that, they're basically the the uh, the us army's main strength the, the infantry units that were around before the war and you know that would later go on after the war as well you know proper regular dress regular army dress all of the finery for their their number twos as well and their number ones all the all the uh, bits and bobs that they need um to to for those regular soldier dress and then we've got the the 18th, which I, well, I'm part of, uh, volunteer infantry unit. Uh, we're, for, we're the only Western unit, um, apart from the 1st Missouri Artillery, only Western unit uh, in Tuscan. So we portray Western soldiers of the American Civil War, so a bit more rough and uh, ragged soldiers. And then we've got the 20, uh, sorry, 24th, sorry, 42nd Pennsylvania, uh, or the Bucktails, and they're sort of our skirmishers, our light infantry, uh, uh, another Eastern Pennsylvania uh, unit in the Civil War. And they basically do all sorts of skirmishing and sort of, sort of the screening effect uh, for us. So sort of three different types there. Then we've got our artillery. We've got the 1st Missouri um, light artillery, our parrot guns. And then we've got the 43rd Pennsylvania artillery, which has uh, our Napoleon uh, cannon, our full-size Napoleon. Uh, and they are basically our, our artillery units. Uh, also, we have a, a medical company as well uh, with our medical doctors and uh 
uh, what is it, orderlies and things like that that come along with that. And then finally, we have the civilian stuff. Um, I think some slightly outdated stuff on there. I don't think we do much of the naval stuff um, anymore because we don't go down and do the, the naval dockyard, dockyard stuff anymore. But the civilian society still exists in Suscan, made up of the men and women that uh, deal with all the c- civilian activities for Suscan. Yeah, excellent. And I know you have uh, touched on the social media side of things, but I mean, this is going to still be relevant. And I did miss out X. I do apologise because I forgot no, right. the next one. But um, um, uh, yeah, so obviously people want to get involved with us. And like you said, one of the main things would be to come along to an event. And that's probably where most people would meet us. Now, so ladies and gentlemen, we probably have about six to seven events a year. Uh, the Southern Skirmish Association, a lot of events are in, in the county of Kent and Essex and Sussex and Surrey. Um, sometimes we cho- we, we uh, do extend down into the West Country, um, but it hasn't happened. Um, it's, it, it, you know, it's not that we don't want to. It's just sometimes a lot of the events that we do are up this end of the country, up where me That's and where the are. events are, unfortunately. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and so we have been trying to get events further west, you know, and it, and hopefully in the future we will. And there are opportunities going to be opening up to us and our and our team. But, um, you know, so, but there are other ways. Obviously, like you said, the website is not currently um, – uh, we're currently working on a new website – so, people, please, if you want to get in contact with us, you can contact us through any of these platforms. But, Robert, you've recently started TikTok. How's that going? Yeah, I mean, um, a thing for me is putting youth back into reenacting. I mean, um, there's a lot of uh, a wonderful uh, older generation that have really fostered um, the current generation, but there's not enough young people I- I- in reenactment as a whole. Obviously, there's bits here and there, as I said before, World War Two is really good with um, young people and stuff like that. And we're sort of trying to dip our toes into the wider market, um, but not just getting young people involved, getting everyone involved. And social media has been a great opportunity for that. I mean, the advent of social media has allowed us to contact everyone across the world. Um, and be able to get our ideas and thoughts and things out to everyone. And I, be, I started a TikTok for, for the society. It's at nearly 150 followers now. It's only about three or four shy off of that at the moment. Um, and it's, it's, it's doing really well. And it's allowed us to use another mode of communication to the general public because Facebook posts, very static, very, this is what we're doing. Here's a Facebook post. Same with Instagram, very picture heavy. But again, here is a static thing. TikTok give you short, sharp shots of information or videos. We're going to be using it very much as the season progresses to really captivate um, or sorry, caption or captivate uh, particular aspects of our society. That will be interesting to people. And hopefully people go, wow, that's really interesting. How can I get involved? That's what we really want. We want more engagement, more involvement, both in our society and with the public as well. Because, you know, again, at the end of the day, one of our ultimate goals is to educate the public about this particular part of history. Yes. So, I mean, I was going to get onto that, the historical educational status. And of course, we are actually a charity, technically, aren't we? Indeed, we are. Um, We are a charity. I can't remember the exact date, I think from the 1980s that we became a charity. Um, but we're a charity status organization, which means we're registered with the UK Charities Commission, which means we have to, uh, you know, uh, do certain things for them each year. But we are a charity, so therefore we can take donations and that helps us run our society along with all our sort of membership fees and that we take in each year and uh, um, fees for events that we do. Um, but as a charity, um, we are uh, specifically got a purpose. We are an educational charity, which means our core motive is to educate the public. Um, Firstly, as living historians, sort of showing what we do to the public, but also in our individual things as well. I mean, if you walk into our camp, you can talk to members of our society and they will, um, you know, a lot of people will be able to go, OK, this is what my equipment is and this is what they did in the Civil War. And they give you a general gist about things. That is the education. Then we've got our displays as well. Pardon me. Uh, we've got displays, as we looked at it, uh, in previous slides, those displays where they'll explain individual elements of the Civil War. And this encompasses our big sort of educational element. Now, I want to push our education element a little bit further uh, and, and sort of introduce things uh, as we go on through the year that will sort of increase our exposure to the public, get them a bit more involved, draw them a bit more into our camps and see what life's like and sort of get that more greater public engagement with what we're doing. 
Excellent. Thanks for that, mate. And uh, is there any final thoughts that may be something that I forgot to ask or we haven't covered here um, before we uh, wrap this uh, podcast up, Robert? No, not particularly. But what I will say is, um, you know, if you really are interested, get in contact with us as soon as you can. Uh, and uh, we, we, we will be able to support you uh, in becoming part of our organization we are a very welcoming organization we really want you to get involved so the 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 better uh, the the sooner you can get contacting us the better we can get you involved and set up for your first event we've got events as darren said all over the place so there will be an event for you to come to come and try it even if you don't want to join us for one event come and see us at an event and then see what we do and then then you can sort of get a gist of what what you want from us and where to go whether it be confederate civilian union uh, and then you, you know the choice is yours then but we we really we really want you to to get involved with us in in whatever way possible yes excellent and we do advertise all of our events on our social media so you will always be able to find out where we are and where we're going to be um yeah and uh, like i said you know we really want you guys uh, p- people to come and get involved with us so yeah, but all that is left to say is uh, Robert Dixon, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sass. Thank you for having me on and being able to talk about Soscan. Excellent. And again, um, going back to the website, um, once the website is back up and running and you're listening... I'm hoping to podcast, within the next month. Yeah. Hopefully. And you're listening to this <laughs> podcast, like, you know, a couple of months down the road, there will be a website and uh, the link will be in the description below, along with everything else that's involved with Soscan. But again, once again, Robert, thank you very much for giving up your time to come and talk thank to you us. Guys.